I made a video a while back where I explained how persistent and intensifying racist attacks against me have made me more racist. And a lot of people were confused by this because racist attacks against white people typically take the form of accusations of racism. And um, so people were like, well, that's a silly reaction. If somebody accused you of being a serial killer, would you go out and become a serial killer? But it's really not that mysterious or hard to understand when you break down the incentives. I mean, if we could all just be cool and be individualists and all that, there would be less of a rationale for racism. Um, there would still be some rationale for it or for ethnocentric behavior because, you know, there are positive benefits in terms of trust and altruism and reciprocity, you know, for kinship and homogeneity. So, you know, there are positive reasons to prefer a homogenous uh, kinship-based in-group. And, um, you know, there may be other reasons, other positive reasons to seek exchange and interaction with outgroups, you know, for mutual benefit. But there's there still are rationale for preferring in-group, uh, homogenous kinship-based in-groups for a great many situations in a great many cases. But if you add to that this, like, persistent and intensifying racial and ethnic conflict, which, which is played out through accusations of racism, and these accusations of racism create... Um, you know, you know, they have the effect of, of delegitimizing your activities or your attitudes and um, creating a positive obligation to cater to the demands of these belligerent accusers. Um, well, that's costly, okay? So they're imposing a cost in order to try and extract benefits and concessions. Um, they're imposing a cost in order to manipulate your behavior in, in ways that are beneficial to them and harmful or costly to you. And so that makes these outgroups, these belligerent, hostile, malicious, parasitic outgroups, you know, correspondingly more costly to tolerate and less beneficial. And so, um, you know, there would be, a, let's say, a mild case for racism or ethnocentrism absent all that. But with all that, you know, there's a much stronger case for it. And not just for in-group preference, but for outgroup hostility as well which is something different. Um, so, so these people actually, by engaging in this, these accusations, these constant accusations of racism, this race baiting, no matter how unfounded it is, no matter how dishonest it is, no matter how baseless it is, um, by engaging in that, they're actually making racism more rational. They're making racism uh, more beneficial because they're making themselves more costly to tolerate and less beneficial to tolerate. And so, um, and, and it's worse than that because, you know, they've broadened the definition way out. So you can actually manipulate people in this way if, if you've got like a narrow set of things, you know, well-defined narrow set of behaviors that you're defining as racist. And then maybe you can threaten people with these accusations and all the associated drama and people will just be like, okay, you know, like, maybe I kind of want to engage in some of those actions or behaviors or attitudes, but um, I really don't want that drama, so I'm just going to just gonna steer clear of that. Um, but once you broaden it way out to, to now where it's like just being white means you're privileged, and you're benefiting from systemic racism, and, uh, you know, that's a stain that you can never absolve yourself of. And that's a stigma you can never avoid or atone for, or, you know, whatever. And uh, furthermore, the only thing you can do to ameliorate the most intensive of the accusations and, and demands is to, is to submit to a never-ending stream of indignities and bear a never-ending stream of, of increasing costs, you know, to uh, satiate these demands that are placed upon you. And, um, and then you get only a partial respite, only a partial reprieve, you know, from the most onerous of them. Um, so they've just made this label and this stigma much harder to avoid, much more costly to avoid. And, um, you know, there's, if it's just a narrow thing where there's a few attitudes and behaviors that they're targeting and, and you can kind of steer clear of them for the most part, 
then maybe that's worth doing. But but when they broaden it way out like they've done, then uh, they really just make it impossibly costly to comply and uh, totally not worthwhile in any sense, in any respect, to comply and to play along with that, uh, which is a, a hostile and parasitic and dishonest and racially motivated attack in order to extract benefits for their racial identity block, their ethnic victim group or whatever it is. And, uh, you know, the more they engage in this kind of behavior, in these kind of ways, you know, the more rational racism becomes because the more costly they are to tolerate and the less beneficial. You know, if we could all just be, if we could all just be cool and be individualistic, um, you know, there would still be some rationale for racist or ethnocentric behavior, but there would be much less and it would be much less intense. Um, but I don't think that's likely because, you know, one of the things they attack is meritocracy. The meritocracy is a very Western value, very ancient Western value. And, um, you know, Western civilization is a product of white people and white people are a product of Western civilization. So from long enforcement of this value and similar values of meritocracy, um, white people have been fairly well adapted to it because, you know, a civilization by the incentives it creates internally with its norms and institutions and laws and everything else determines who survives and who reproduces. So as a consequence, you know, white people are fairly well adapted to meritocracy and fairly capable of benefiting from meritocracy and willing and able to bear the cost of meritocracy because meritocracy also has costs, right? If you join a meritocratic hierarchy, you're not necessarily going to end up uh, exactly where you want to be in that hierarchy. You're not necessarily going to end up doing exactly what you want to do in that hierarchy, right? Because you have to prove yourself against others in competition with others. And you're not going to win all of the competitions. Nobody can. Um, so it's very, very unlikely that you're going to end up at the top of that hierarchy or anywhere close to it. It may still be better to be in the hierarchy than not in the hierarchy because a meritocratic hierarchy is very competitive and produces benefits for its members. So so it's better to be in the hierarchy than not in the hierarchy, but but you're not necessarily going to end up exactly where you want to be. So th there's a cost, but also a benefit. Now, for white people, the, the, the benefit is generally worth the cost. But there are other people who are not adapted to those kind of norms, who have not been selected um, for or by meritocracy for merit, and so, you know, within those institutions, within those hierarchies, they're not going to rise as far at the same frequency. And so for them, meritocracy may be more cost than benefit. And so they're going to see, well, it doesn't matter how they see meritocracy. You know, they may genuinely see it as racist or not, but they're going to, they're going to be able to attack it as racist. And um, if they can attack it as racist, you know, then maybe they can raise their status above what they could, they could obtain on merit. And so that's a possible, possible strategy for hacking meritocracy and obtaining a higher status than they can obtain on merit. And so, um, you know, the more unequal certain groups are, the more likely they are going to be to engage in such shenanigans. And... Um, so for that reason, you know, this idea that we can all just be cool and be individualists and be meritocratic is kind of a naive fantasy because, you know, white people are selected by meritocracy and selected for meritocracy um, to be able to function in meritocratic hierarchies and to be able to pay the costs and willing to pay the costs of functioning in meritocratic hierarchies. But other people may not be selected either for willingness or ability to pay those costs, to realize those benefits, um, and they're going to either perceive meritocracy as racist based on, you know, some disparate impact doctrine where any inequality of outcomes is perceived as prima facie evidence of oppression and discrimination and 
other untoward activities. Um, or they're going to claim that they do. You know, they're going to make those claims as, as a means of raising their status within those hierarchies. Um, and so this gets me to a final point, which is that, you know, identity is not individually determined. And this is a point that Jordan Peterson has actually made, you know, talking about the trans stuff. He's saying, you know, no, you don't get to, you don't get to determine your own gender, say, or your own pronouns. Um, it's, it's a negotiate, uh, identity is negotiated. It's determined by everyone, you know, intersubjectively. It's not subjective, it's intersubjective. Um, and, uh, and if you're not a woman, it doesn't benefit me to agree that you're a woman. So just claiming that you're a woman is not sufficient. What are you offering me? And, and they're not offering me anything. They're just demanding that I, that I recognize them as a woman. Um, but, you know, the same is true of this racism stuff. So if somebody accuses you of being a racist, you don't just get to say, no, I'm not a racist. You know, even if that accusation is totally baseless and wrong and dishonest and malicious and manipulative and parasitic, you can't just say, no, I'm not a racist because they're not going to accept that, right? And if there's enough of them, it doesn't do you any good. Like if it were just one crazy guy calling random people racist, it is, but it isn't, right? It's whole groups, whole ethnic blocks. And their enablers, their treacherous, backstabbing, faithless enablers within ours. All right, who perceive some benefit, whether you know, in virtue signaling or whatever, to try and enable that kind of behavior, or maybe they're uh, sad sacks too, and they think if they can help orchestrate a transfer of wealth to these unequal groups, you know, maybe they can keep a, a share for themselves. I don't know. I don't know what all their motives are, but the point is, there's enough of them to matter. So you can't. You can't just say, no, I'm not a racist. That option isn't available to you. It's like, um, you know, there's a Lewis C.K. bit where it's like if somebody calls you an asshole, you can't just say no, because that's not up to you. That's up to everybody else. It's like by the same token, if somebody calls you a racist, you can't just say no, because that's, that's not up to you. The question is, if there's somebody calling you a racist, and not just somebody, but a large group of them, you know, what is the course that benefits you the most? And it's like, well, you can accede to their demands. You can cater to their demands. You can give them the parasitic rents that they desire. You can give them the unearned status that they desire. All right, all of that is costly. It's not clear that there's any benefit other than avoiding drama in the short term. Um, or you can agree with them, agree and amplify fuck off. Yeah, I am. Whatever. Who cares? I'm not giving you shit. You're not entitled to anything. And if you keep it up, you know, you're going to see some real racism. Some real fucking racism. Like from back in the old days. Or worse. So just step the fuck off. Just back off. Those are your options. You don't get to say no. You don't get to say no I'm a, I'm a nice, tolerant, non-racist white guy. That's not up to you. You don't get to define your identity. Your identity is negotiated. And the question is, if someone's being an asshole to you, are you going to take it? Are you going to fucking give them everything they demand? Or are you going to be an asshole right back? That's the only thing you get to decide. 